desire to know him while you choose to trust him. It's not going to be on the screen. That's why I'm saying it to you again. Desire to know him while you choose to trust him. And not until you're trusting God with your care are you trusting him with your results. <laughs> Let me say it again. Not till you trust them. Somebody needs to go in there and put that on, uh, uh, tweet that real quick, uh, 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 real quick, so somebody can get it in your area. Not until you're trusting God with your care are you trusting Him with your results. You got to trust Him with not only what you're doing, but trust Him with what you care about. Then you're trusting him with your resource. Don't waste life, money, or resources. Be a giver with a cause. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Don't waste, what did I say? Don't waste what? Life, what? Or be a, be a giver with a cause. Where's my phone? Uh, uh, where's my phone? I, I want to I share something with you that, that our presiding bishop elect shared with uh, the, the uh, ministers the other day, the pastors and the bishops and everybody that was there in the room. And he said a few things that I thought was very good on this whole thing of how you handle your finances. And, and you know, uh, very it's interesting. It's interesting that we have to talk about this every once in a while. But he gave some simple money principles. He says here, and they're simple. It's, gonna be, you're gonna think it's, it's just dumbed down stuff. Make sense. He says, spend less than you earn. <laughs> he said, avoid the use of debt. <laughs> he says, as you secure and share, also save. As you sec secure and share. And share, also save. And then he says, set long-term goals. Right. But he says, when you give, learn how to give generously. That's the essence of what I said. Be a giver with a cause. Look at someone say, be a giver with a cause. Yeah. Always make sure that whatever you're investing in has some kind of return yes, sir. that is attached to it. Doesn't make any sense for you to save all your money. I, I'm afraid to talk to y'all like this on Sunday morning. But it makes sense for you to save your money and not get any interest off of it. Or not invest it where you can get anything from it. You've got to make sure you have something happening. Social Security, I don't know what's going to happen with Social Security. Neither do you. All I know is not going to be what it used to be. <clears throat> so that means what's going to happen if you have nothing in? Who's going to take care of your life? Can the people around your life right now sustain you? <laughs> oh, I know you guys hate, I know you guys hate to, hear to talk like that. I got to talk like that to you some. Okay, you know, I know it's, you know, I, I know this is going to be a good, good, we can have a good knock down, drag out, shout, run through the aisle sermon. But I just want to ask, ask you some simple questions because when you look at it, if something happened to you, who's going to take care of you? And if they took care of you, what would your life be like? Because what can you trust them to do for you right now? Okay, I just want you to think. Go and write in your own notes. Do whatever you want to do. Tell your own story because... Uh, you got to plan for the success you want to have. Come on, look at somebody. Plan for the success you want to have. You blessed if you have somebody that loves you enough to take care of you. Yes, you are. You blessed if you have someone that loves you enough to take care of you. But at least have them or somebody in the plan. Mm -hmm. Somebody that's able. Somebody able in the plan. All right. Yeah, okay. I get to the preaching part so y'all can. <laughs> I know all this was the meddling part. Y'all like, oh, God, Lord, I ain't what I can. <laughs> I get to the part. Well, yeah, I want you to have, look at your name. Say, Bishop really wants us to have victory. But I really want you to seriously as well think about it. Because people, when you become work to them, sometimes it's easy for them to dis begin to dismiss you. And for you to fall off the map. So it's important that you make sure you hook up with people and pe people around you that if something happened to you, they love you enough to still help take care of you. I, I want y'all to get that real clear. 
Once you get to get that clear, you know. And, uh, and it comes in different fashions and different ways. So I had, to, I had to say this much on this morning so we can kind of really get to this point here. So when we look at this particular text, he puts us in this place where it says, don't waste life, money, or resources, but be a giver with a cause. Not the, uh, 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 and uh, the scripture here deals with Paul being at a place where he was at a downturn in his life. He's doing ministry. He's doing what he's called to do, but he's a proficient person. He has an acumen for business. He's done well. He's been a, over a regiment of soldiers. He is an educated man. He was uh, taught Jewish history by Gamaliel. He grew up in Tarsus on the Roman side of town. He had esteem and position. They even put him in the Roman army at one point. He had uh, a p place where he was austere. He could be excellent in who he was, but here was the problem. Because he took on this thing called ministry, he lost all of it. Here he is now putting out. Remember, when he entered into ministry, after he went and saw Ananias, it took him three years before even the disciples would accept him. And he, Galatians 1 tells us the story. The very first chapter talks specifically about it was only Jesus' brother James that stood with him as he went and looked for help to see Peter and try to join him because all of them remembered he being the one who was part of crucifying and killing those uh, Christians that believed. And so here was the issue. His past wouldn't, be, his past wouldn't let him go. And, and can, let me tell you, let me tell you that when you start doing better, you can't be towed up about the fact that sometimes people will bring up your past. His past wouldn't let him go. And I know sometimes when we're doing better, we want people, well, you need to forget that. I'm not that person anymore. I'm through with it. I'm a different person. I'm doing this now. Look at where I am. But don't be upset about the fact that you're always going to run into some people who only will remember you when. Yes, right. yes, <laughs> and and, and uh, I, I always say, you know, you can't talk your way out of something you behave yourself into. Yes, right. It's just a part of life. And so, y'all thinking? Y'all thinking? Yes, right. <laughs> so, because of this, here comes, here's the situ situation. He's down on life, but now he looks at verse 10. He begins to say, but I rejoiced in the Lord greatly. Now uh, that now at the last your care of me had flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. He says, listen here, I know y'all knew I was down, but I thank you, church at Philippi, that even though uh, those, there were those who were with me and around me who would not help me, you always sent to my necessity. You tried to make sure that I had what I needed to keep going on this journey of my ministry. You look past whatever anybody else said about me and you decided to sow into me because you believed in me. Are y'all getting what I'm saying here? And then he goes and he said, not that I speak of one. This is where this verse comes from. He says, but I have learned in whatsoever state I'm in therewith to be content. The issue he's basically saying is because I had to suffer and live without, it does not mess me up to have to go without. Uh, I've gone without before, so going without ain't going to scare me no more. I'm not going to jump out the window. I ain't going to kill myself over no money. <laughs> are y'all are y'all getting what I'm saying here? He sets this up and begins to say, I've been through enough to realize as long as I got breath in my body, I can start all over. Somebody talk to your neighbor and just tell them you can start over again. Because there's a whole lot of folk who have money and they messed up and tore up because they got all the stuff but they have no experience and they don't know how to handle it when they have to go down. But if you've been down and had to work your way back up, I wonder if there anybody here ever been down and had to work your way back up. And had to work your way back up. My man, woman, you got some fight in you. He says, whatever state I'm in. Somebody say, whatever state I'm in. 
I've learned how to be content. Content is not necessary to be happy, but it's able to function with or without the things that make me happy. I may not have cable. I may not have a new car. I may not have the top line appliances, but Lord, thank you for this little cookie sheet I got. Thank you for this, <laughs> for the microwave. Thank you for... Are y'all getting what I'm saying here? Because you can have all that stuff and not be able to use it. I looked at just, just recently in the, in the middle when the winter got real bad. Out in my area, the electricity went out for four days. And I, had a, I got a wonderful stove, a, a double oven. I, had a, I got a great refrigerator. And I, I got a great uh, a kitchen. Nothing worked. All I could do is walk through all those nice lights, and, uh, those stainless steel appliances, and just look at them in disdain because uh, there was nothing, no matter how good they look, how well they work before now, there was nothing they could do because the power was off. And sometimes what God will do in your life is that he'll turn the power off. <laughs> Somebody ought to talk to your neighbor and say, have God ever turned the power off in your life? He'll let some stuff happen that only he can turn back on. He'll cause some stuff to happen that only he can fix. He'll let some things happen that only he can change. And God knows how to sit you down so you learn where resurrection power comes from. He'll let you know he's the only one that can lift you up out of this situation. And sometimes you got to look at your best and know that they, it cannot do anything for you when God turns the power off. But the good thing about God, just as sure as he turns it off, because he's a loving God, because he's a kind God, because he's a gracious God, because he's an awesome God, the same God that will turn it off will look back at your life and say, it's enough now. <laughs> Somebody hear you here today because God said it's enough now. The enemy has been attacking your life, but God says it's enough now. Situations have come your way that you would like to be different, but God said it's enough now. It used to have power on you, but you look up now, God has uh, turned the power back on. Somebody look at your life, look at your name and say, My power is turned on. That's why I can't drop my momentum. That's why I can't stop singing. That's why I can't stop praising. That's why I can't stop lifting him up. The power is on. The power is on. And while the power is on, Jesus says, ye are the light of the world. Let your light so shine that men might see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Somebody here talk to your neighbor and say, the power's back on, the power. Are y'all not, y'all playing with me? Just talk to somebody and tell them the power's back on. That's why now when we get to where we are, we're at a point where we can celebrate our success. Talk to your neighbor and say, I celebrate the success that's in your life. I've learned how to be a base. I've learned how to abound. I've learned in all things that I'm instructed to be both full and then also to be hungry. And sometimes even though I have food, God has said, put yourself on a fast. Be hungry for a while because I need you to remember what it feels like not to be, have everything right at your hand both how to abound and how to suffer need I've been through enough to stop worrying about if God's going to show up now I wonder is there anybody in the room that can say that I've come through enough now I've been through enough now I've seen enough now I've experienced enough now to stop worrying about it is God going to show up yeah, he going to show up. I need somebody here to help me <laughs> and talk to your name and say, I don't care what you're going through. Yeah, he going to show up. Yeah, he's going to bring you through. Yeah, he's going to deliver you. Yeah, he's going to turn it around. Yeah, he's going to make it happen. If God be for you, who, who can be against you? Help me real quick. Pull, grab my neighbor and pull him up and say, I got to pull you out of this. God is about to bless you. Get with this momentum. The power is on. Thanks be unto God.
that giveth us the victory. Hold your head up high. Your best days are about to come. Lift your head up. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King? Who is the King? The Lord mighty, he is the King. Somebody tell your neighbor, God's got this thing. Somebody shout, glory. Woo! Can I go back to the beginning? If I go back to the beginning, one thing I got to say, I'm alive today. Because God never abandoned me. He has kept me through every storm and every battle. And just like I needed him then, I still need him right now. And just like I called him back then, I can call him right now. And just like he made a way back then, he can make a way right now. Regardless of whatever we go through, we owe God for being good in our life. So here is our objective. Know this thing about God, that God has a brand new opening for you. Get ready to focus and then refocus. Why, Bishop? Because Psalm 25 and 15 says, Mine eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Talk to your neighbor, say, I don't care who's holding you. You're trying to get up, but they got you. You're trying to get over, but they got you. Seem like you can't get past this promotion. Seem like you can't get all these bills paid. Seem like you can't get all these things handled. Talk to your neighbor and say, but you're about to come out of this. Because it's time to celebrate success. Somebody in here tell your neighbor, neighbor, I feel my success brewing in the atmosphere. I begin to really understand here that it's not about me, but it's about God that's in me. I know that even if my enemies come in like a flood, he'll lift up a standard against him and the Redeemer shall come to Zion that no weapon formed against me shall prosper and that every tongue against me shall be condemned that if I can't shout over what I see, I can shout over what I believe. I just need some believing folk in here to talk to your neighbors and neighbor. I believe too much to let this situation wear me out. I'm believing too much to let myself get caught up in this. I believe too much to act like I'm not going to make it as long as God said I can. I know I can. I hear the word say I can do all things. I can do all things. I can do all things. Somebody help me preach and pass it around and just say all things. All things. All things. All things. Talk in the room and say, observe me. This is the last time you're going to see me in this predicament. Observe me real good. I'm going to be better than I am. The next time you see me, I'm going to be higher than I am now. This is the last time you see me thinking about some things. The enemy going to have to come up with a new attack for me to get mad over. Because I'm over that one now. I see my victory. I understand who's over me. And now I, I know I can praise God for everything. I can praise him because he kept me sane. I can praise him because he kept me strong. I can praise him because he kept me focused. I can praise him because he kept me from danger. I can praise him because he kept me protected. I can praise him because he kept me in peace. I can praise him because he kept me in his love. I can praise him because he kept me alive. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody make a way like Jesus. If God brought you out, don't wait till your prayer's battle is over. Shout now. I shout now. God made a way for you. Go ahead and give him glory. Somebody out there help me praise him. Let everything
say, neighbor, can I prophesy to you? Let me tell you one thing. God is about to lift you up again. Oh, they didn't get it. Find you another neighbor. Look at that next neighbor and tell him God is about to lift you up again. God is about to lift you up out of whatever you've been buried under, whatever's been holding you down, not gonna hold you down anymore. You ought to feel yourself getting lighter. You ought to see your day getting brighter. You ought to know that God is making 